A mother is under arrest, accused of shoplifting, then holding her baby in a headlock as she tried to fight off cops arresting her. It happened at the Kohl's store on Germantown Parkway. Wright says this is what happened. Turnage jumped out of that apartment window, hit a railing on the way down, and landed here, crumpled in a ball. But since then, there has been some changes. A crosswalk and a bunch of new signs. This is a boil and bite mouth guard, but some say it's not nearly as effective as this, which is custom made. But she always tells them the same thing. She references the law and lets them know that Tennessee does not allow two people of the same sex to get married. The last several weeks, neighbors say none of them have been getting their mail. Not them, not them, not them, all because of this house over here where two pit bulls have often been on the loose. But one business we talked to say they're actually seeing a slight increase in customers because of it. And they all got handed these black bow ties to celebrate this big day, but unfortunately they did not get to see the star himself. And when he was headed to class, he realized he had dropped his lunch money in the road. So when he came back to pick it up, he says before he knew it, he was under a car. So Kachin says she works hard to make her money, so she was not about to let a group of hoodlums take it away from her. Says that he's been getting phone calls from Philadelphia, even New Jersey. Parents who are upset about this assignment, but he says the teachers have been assigning this for the past three years. This is the kind of hole these thieves are creating. Two feet by four feet, and all they're getting is about 25 to 50 bucks for the scrap metal, and they're creating a major safety hazard for people. Witnesses say police kicked down this door right here to get to Roger Williams, and the blood stain left on the grass shows exactly how badly he was beaten. He Minutes out. later, today she called me just after I interviewed Jasmine Bird, and she said, why did you interview Jasmine? I said, well, how did you know I interviewed Jasmine? And she says, I know everything. Now, this is exactly why Jasmine says she's been living in fear. All new at 6 o'clock, Memphis police arrest three people accused of forcing a 14-year-old girl into prostitution. Police say it all started when the trio posted the girl's picture online. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sabrina Hall. Stephanie has the night off. Shalisa Wright, Rodney Armstrong, and Trenton Mitchell are all charged in this case. Police arrested them Friday night after a sting operation. According to a police affidavit, officers contacted Wright, posing as a potential customer. She agreed to travel to a location on Union Avenue. Wright showed up. With the teenager and two other men, but police were there waiting for them. The girl told officers she was forced into prostitution after Wright posted her picture on the website Backpage.com. All three suspects are charged with sex trafficking. A teenager is in the hospital tonight after getting crushed by a car. Police say it was not an accident. This woman, 21-year-old Kirsty Lewis, is in jail charged with aggravated assault. According to police, Lewis hit the teenager, backed up, and ran over her again. Lewis's daughter and niece were in the car with her. Police say Lewis left the scene of the accident and drove to her father's house where he convinced her to turn herself in. He says she was involved in an ongoing dispute with the woman who was related to the teen hit by the car. It would be a crying shame for the girl to lose her life or be handicapped or anything because she led to some dust leading her the wrong way. Lewis appears before a judge Monday morning. She faces a charge of aggravated assault. An update tonight on a shooting in Raleigh. Memphis police have arrested a suspect accused of shooting a man at his own front door. It happened last night on Beverly Hills near JFK Park. Police say it all started with an argument earlier in the day on Friday. Investigators say 34-year-old Charles Shaw returned to the house and shot the victim who is expected to recover. Shaw is now charged with aggravated assault. Sheriff deputies in Oxford are searching for a missing elderly woman. 82-year-old Mabel Pettis was last seen yesterday afternoon around 3 o'clock. She suffers from early stages of dementia and may not be able to return home. Pettis is driving a maroon 2002 Chrysler Sebring similar to this one. If you have any information about her whereabouts, contact Lafayette County Sheriff's Department at 662-236-3111. The Mid-South is drying out from a few days of rain this week. While the rain may have been an inconvenience for some, like me, it is good news for local farmers. As Aubrey Killian reports, farmers in the Fort Smith, Arkansas area say the wet weather is definitely good for crops. Witnesses say police kicked down this door right here to get to Roger Williams, and the blood stain left on the grass shows exactly how badly he was beaten. He came out with his hands up. He did not say nothing to them. He came out with his hands up. These people say they saw it all. And the black officers just standing back. It's only the three white officers beating him. So what does that look like? They kept repeatedly beating him. Bust his head. 
bust his face open. They say they watched officers beat their friend at the Eden Point Apartments, who they claim did nothing but call for help. He said, help me, y'all, help me. He was not resisting at all. I don't even know why they gave him a resistant charge. I was holding everybody back, and I got maced in my face. Eden Apartments is patrolled by officers since it's considered a dangerous complex in South Memphis. Officers say they tried to stop Roger Williams after seeing him pace in front of this apartment. When they asked him for ID, they say he elbowed an officer in the face and slapped another officer's hand in the door as he ducked inside. We read the accusations to the crowd. Officer Brewer then grabbed suspect Roger Williams and he elbowed him in the face. Hell no. Oh. They say the only assault they saw was three officers attacking a man already in handcuffs. He kept on saying, help me. And every time he said, help me, the officer would punch him in the face and be like, shut up. The ladies were screaming because we like, why are you doing them like this? The Memphis Police Department will not say whether it's investigating these accusations of police brutality. Something got to be done about them, huh? Something got to be done. But this group says they plan to report what they saw to internal affairs. That's not accurate. No, no, no. Reporting from South Memphis, Sabrina Hall, WRAG News Channel 3. It's not easy to forget when it's your brother. It's just hard, man. Or your friend. We went to middle school together, high school together. Portia Martin says she played the clarinet while Stephen Askew played the trombone in the Wooddale High School Band. Years later, she's here without him. I want justice. I want them to be behind bars like all the other criminals that kill people for no reason. Problem is, the two men who killed Askew are Memphis police officers, and the district attorney decided there's not enough evidence to prosecute them. Police say Askew pointed a gun at them. Others argue crime scene evidence makes that theory impossible. His right hand was occupied and not with a weapon. News Channel 3 requested the 911 calls, police dispatch recordings, and crime scene photos to find out more about what happened January 17th. 325 Delta allowed me to call. It started with a phone call. It's a lot of music be playing. A woman called police about loud music coming from an apartment on Tyrol Court. It's coming from upstairs. Officers Ned Oftenkamp and Matthew Dias responded to the complaint. Afterwards, they went to the complex next door, the Windsor Place Apartments, and found Stephen Askew in the parking lot asleep in his car. They noticed a gun in his lap. Officer Oftenkamp called it in. Dispatch recordings obtained by News Channel 3 show only 15 seconds pass before Oftenkamp reports back. Fire, shot fire. Both officers emptied their guns, hitting Askew's car 22 times and him nine times. Days later, the officers told investigators they shot Askew because he smirked, threw up gang signs, reached for his gun, and then pointed it at Officer Oftenkamp. All of that would have had to have taken place in this window of time, which appears to be less than 15 seconds. In the internal investigation file, two women in the complex say they saw Askew put his hands up when ordered by police. Askew's family attorney, Howard Manis, says following those orders might have killed him. In this crime scene photo, you can see Askew died with a cigar in his right hand. I think that it's likely that that was mistaken for something other than a cigar. Mana says if he had a cigar in his hand, he probably didn't point the gun. He had a cigar in his right hand, and he's right-handed, so makes it leaves room for doubt. Chris Fowler is a shooting instructor at Top Brass Sports in Millington and the chief of police in Mason, Tennessee. I was his teacher. He knew Askew because the 24-year-old was a student in his handgun permit class in February of 2012. Askew had no criminal history and earned a permit to carry a gun. Family members say he got it because he'd been robbed a few years earlier. I liked him. I thought he was a great young man. He, he was very clean cut, very polite, um, soft spoken. Not certainly not a thug type of person at all. Fowler says Askew's death is nothing less than tragic. But as a police officer himself, he understands often Camp and Dias's experience. You come up on a car, you look in, see a gun. You know your adrenaline goes up 300 percent, and you're you're trained to react to the gun. Him having a gun in his lap wasn't a crime. But as an officer coming up on that kind of situation, and I, and I see the gun, I'm going to be very concerned about that weapon, and I'm going to draw my weapon to make sure I don't get shot. However, Askew's family attorney says the officers could have been better trained. They saw an African-American in a car with a weapon, and they made some assumptions. 
I run into people every day that just found out my little brother died, and you know, and I have to see them hurt like the, I was hurt the first day. As for Askew's brother, Sterling, who could almost be his twin, he says he's not letting people forget. If we had to do it with three, four people, we'll do it with three, four people. Stephen Askew will be missed. More than all to him. More than all to him. Sabrina Hall, WREG News Channel 3. Just as a song has its high notes and low ones, so does life. Everything, everything I ever worked for. For songwriter and guitar player Nate Whitlock, a fire almost stole his music. Yeah, I lost everything. All my stage clothes and my guitars, and my amplifiers. A fire turned his room at this Broad Avenue boarding house into an inferno. It's surreal. It's hard to grab that, you know. But across state lines in Mississippi, somebody heard Nate's story. I carry this one with me. Every musician has a guitar nearby. Mark Daniels heard Nate's song. Guy lost his guitar. It's like losing the love of your life if you're a musician. And this musician says he is also starting over at age 55, going back to college, majoring in music. You know, everybody doesn't get a candy apple opportunity. They don't get a candy apple life. This guy's had a hard time. He needs he needs uh, a little help can go a long way. I wanted to give you this. Oh my God, he want to give me this? Wow. It's a six string Gibson electric guitar. As good as it gets. It's like Chuck Berry's guitar. <laughs> wow, I cannot believe it. Wow, that's amazing. Thanks, Mark. A gift from one musician starting over. I'm putting myself through school now. Got a scholarship at Delta State. Bless his heart. To another. This is going to get it back on the road again. On to a new life. And a new song. Maybe he'll write a really great song. And maybe somebody here in Memphis will listen. Sabrina Hall, WREG News Channel 3.